Well, joining me now, New York Post columnist Miranda Devine. Miranda, it's great to see you. What's going to happen to Boudin in San Francisco? More importantly, what do you think it means for the rest of the country if, in fact, he is voted out? Hi, Brian. Look, I mean, I hope against hope that he's voted out because it means more than just uh, better law and order for the people of San Francisco. It, it actually will send a sign to the Democrats and to progressives everywhere that the people do not want what they're selling. They do not want high crime rates. They do not want their streets to be uh, full of grime and disorder and to be dangerous. I mean, uh, this is a complete breakdown of law and order in mm. San Francisco, but it's repeated across the country in cities like New York, where Alvin Bragg is the latest progressive prosecutor who the first thing he did when he ca came in was just decide to dismantle uh, a whole lot of uh, policies that kept New Yorkers safe. Mm. Yeah, Eric Adams, Mayor Eric Adams in New York certainly had something to say about that. He's calling out New York City's criminal justice system. Miranda, take a listen to this. No one takes criminal justice seriously anymore. These bad guys no longer take them seriously. They believe our criminal justice system is a laughing stock of our entire country. So Mayor Adams saying this as new polling shows 76 percent of New Yorkers fear they will become a victim of violent crime. Miranda, you know, on one hand, you hear the mayor say these tough words. On the other hand, look, I'm a guy who lives in New York most of the year. I've watched Adam since he took office. To me, it feels like if he really wanted to be this tough on it, he would have started saying these things back in February and March, not waiting until June. Your reaction to how Adams is responding to this? Look, the only reason that Eric Adams is the mayor is because he ran on a law and order platform, which none of his Democratic uh, rivals did. That's what the people of New York wanted. He came in, he talked a good talk, but he really hasn't done anything. I mean, he's been here six months and things are just as dangerous as ever they were. I mean, he's telling us that they've taken some guns off the street. Great. Um, but, you know, in terms of our quality of life, you would know walking around the streets that there is a mental health problem that's repeated across progressive cities around the country, but it's particularly bad here in New York. And it's dangerous. Uh, people don't want to catch the subway anymore in mm. case they'll be shot up, as happened not too long ago, or get pushed onto the railway tracks or some crazy person comes and pulls their hair. I mean, it's, it's a dangerous situation in this city and it's getting worse. It's not Eric Adams' fault. I mean, it is the fault of his predecessor, Bill de Blasio, and of the lawmakers in Albany. But he needs to do something and he needs to do more than just tell everybody it's a laughing stock. No one is laughing. Well, that's just the thing. He says laughing stock. Who in this country is laughing at what's going on in New York or Philadelphia? It's, it's not laughing. It's a catastrophe. So, it, you know, the framing of it almost is missing the point. This is not about inconvenience or silliness. This is about quality of life, Miranda. You, you think about issues like this, you know, economic issues tend to be at the top of the polls every time. It's inflation. But crime to me is one of those quality of life issues. When you pair it with something like inflation, you've got a combo that really motivates voters. Do you see those two issues in particular working together this year as we lead up to the midterms to really cause change, not just at a local level, but at a national level? Absolutely. And I mean, you've you've put your finger on the problem. Uh, you, you, you basically have these lawmakers, these Democrats, who have their own private armies looking after them. They have armed guards uh, everywhere they go. So they are shielded from the uh, problems that the rest of us have to deal with. They also are well paid and uh, they're better paid than their salaries because you know that they're going to be uh, making a lot of money and getting a lot of grace and favour jobs whenever they're out of office. So they have no financial and no crime worries. Um, and therefore, they just don't feel what everyone else feels. They don't understand what it's like to try and fill up your, your, uh, your car or pay for the grocery bill. Uh, and they don't understand what it's like to try and catch the subway to get to work. So um, I, I think they're completely out of touch and they will be getting 
a, a real awakening mm. uh, in November. And today, I think Jesse Boudin and others like him will also be getting, let's hope, a slap in the face. Well, you know, they need it because if they can't feel it, people feel it. And at some level, you need your elected representatives to understand the problems you're trying to solve so they can work for them. That's just not happening right yeah. now. Eric Adams, it's an attempt, but the fact that he's calling it a laughing stock to me suggests he does not understand what the people on the ground, in the subway, on the streets of New York City and across this country feel. Miranda, we got to leave it there. Always good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Brian.